The oscilloscope is a veritable multi-tool for any scientist or engineer interested in accurately probing complex voltage patterns. And while the general functionalities of an oscilloscope are common across many different makes and models, the specific interfaces and operational quirks may vary widely. Therefore, these instructional videos will focus on describing and demonstrating general functionalities with the assumption that these lessons may be applied later to any instrument. To better understand the functionality of this powerful tool, it may help to understand that the original analog oscilloscope made use of a large cathode tube which would create an electron beam that could be deflected by a series of electrically charged plates. By aligning these plates perpendicularly, the electron beam could be directed to hit any location on a phosphor-coated screen at the end of the cathode tube. When an electron would strike the phosphor screen, visible light would be emitted, with this bright mark called trace on an oscilloscope. At the most basic level, an oscilloscope is simply intended to display voltage versus time, which means readings must be interpreted from a coordinate plane. Almost without exception, all oscilloscopes are therefore equipped with some form of coordinate axis printed on the primary display screen, with the internal electronics calibrated such that a scaling knob correlates the voltage signal to that coordinate plane in the vertical direction. Similarly, a different scaling knob may be used to calibrate how quickly the trace passes across the screen in the horizontal direction. While analog oscilloscopes are still very effective, it has become more common for scientists and engineers to use newer digital models. Other than the substantial difference in size and weight, digital oscilloscopes do away with the bulky cathode tube, using instead some form of LCD screen to display a digitized version of the voltage plot. It is important to realize that this technology is only possible because of high-precision analog-to-digital signal converters. For this first procedure, and whenever utilizing an oscilloscope, it is important to make sure that the equipment is working properly. Since we are using an attenuator probe today, it is particularly important to make sure that the probe has been correctly set up. Most oscilloscopes include a special calibration connector, and when the probe is connected, will display a standardized plot. In this case, we will connect the hook tip of the attenuator probe to the calibration pin and press the auto set button. If everything is calibrated correctly, a square wave should appear with a magnitude and frequency as specified by the oscilloscope. If the magnitude did not display correctly, or if no trace was seen, we could drill into the menu for the first channel to locate any potential issues. In this case, hitting the channel menu button will turn the trace on or off, as well as provide options for selecting coupling type or attenuation factors. Since this probe is designed to decrease signal voltage by 10 times, or 10x, the settings of this oscilloscope must be changed to coincide with this attenuation factor. It is noteworthy that the general functionalities of an oscilloscope are not all that different from a digital multimeter. So in this second procedure, we'll make some comparisons between the two. If we set the voltage of this power supply to 5 volts using the DMM, we can also use the oscilloscope to vary this measurement as well. However, before we go attaching the scope's probe to the protoboard power supply, we must first set the oscilloscope coupling to ground and make sure that the trace is aligned with the center horizontal line. This creates a reference point for the reading the voltage later. If the trace is not aligned with the horizontal line, it can be shifted by turning the vertical adjustment knob. We are almost ready to connect the oscilloscope probe to the power supply, but first we should take a moment to consider how the voltage scaling should be sized. Similar to how the voltage range on some DMMs must be set to an appropriate scale, we can adjust how many volts per division are displayed on the oscilloscope. A division is simply one block on the graph screen of our oscilloscope. So if the oscilloscope is set to, say, 20 volts per division, we would interpret the trace of the oscilloscope appearing two divisions above the center line as representing a signal of 40 volts. In our case, we know that the voltage we are expecting to see is only 5 volts. So if each division is set to only 2 volts, then we would expect the reading to reach about 2 and 1 half divisions. So now, if we change our coupling back to DC and attach the hook tip 
of the scope probe to the positive binding post and connect the grounding clip of the probe to the grounded binding post, we will see what we expected to. The flat line on the oscilloscope screen moves from zero to approximately two and a half divisions, indicating a reading of approximately five volts. Now I can imagine what you're thinking. Why bother using the oscilloscope to measure voltage when it was clearly easier to use the DMM? Well, while this may be true for measuring DC or direct current, where the oscilloscope really distinguishes itself is in measuring alternating current, or AC. To illustrate this point in our third procedure, let's swap the attenuator probe for just a BNC to banana cable. And since this cable does not have any attenuating factor, we will need to go into the settings for the first channel and remove any voltage scaling that was being used before. We will then zero our scale again by setting the oscilloscope to the ground coupling and then adjusting the trace to be aligned with the center horizontal line. But this time, we will change the coupling status to AC as we connect the oscilloscope to this function generator. Arbitrarily, we will set the function generator to produce a sinusoidal waveform with a frequency of 250 hertz, while the amplitude we will leave somewhere around the half the capacity of the generator. Depending on how the waveform appears on the oscilloscope, we may need to adjust the scale to be able to see a desired number of oscillations. If the waveform is too tall or too short, we will adjust the vertical volts per division scale. And if the waveform is too spread out or too close together, we will adjust the horizontal seconds per division scale. Alternatively, on some digital oscilloscopes such as this, the device may be equipped with an auto set or auto scaling option, which can be utilized to more rapidly fit the waveform to the viewing screen. Now it is clear how useful the oscilloscope can be, because while the DMM is only able to show us an instantaneous value, the oscilloscope will plot voltage versus time to give us a better picture of what is going on. Although you may have noticed that the DMM also has an AC setting, and if we probe the function generator while the DMM is set to AC, we will get a single constant value instead of the constantly changing value we measured while still set to DC. However, the value the DMM is displaying in this AC mode is called root mean squared, or RMS, voltage, which is a special type of averaging for AC voltage that we will consider in more depth in the next procedure. And while we could calculate this RMS value from the oscilloscope by hand, it is far more convenient to have the oscilloscope do those calculations for us. And as we move into this fourth procedure of this experiment, we'll explore how to use the automated measuring features included on this digital oscilloscope to determine an RMS voltage for this waveform. These forms of automated calculations are typically stored under some kind of measuring menu. In this case, there's a large selection of automated measuring options, which include the RMS voltage, as well as the waveforms period, peak-to-peak -peak voltage, and many others. For this particular oscilloscope, once these options are selected using the multi-purpose control knob, the oscilloscope will display the calculated readings at the bottom of the screen. For this last procedure, we'll change our waveform to something a little more pointed as we look for a correlation between the cycle RMS voltage and the peak-to-peak -peak voltage. But with the automated measuring utilities activated, this is as simple as adjusting the magnitude on the function generator and reading off the results on the oscilloscope.